In order to illustrate the new feature in InDesign CS6 of linked content when it comes to stories or text frames, I'm going to use the new Content Collector tool. What I'd like to do is take this print document, and I'll show you the pages. It's a letter size horizontal, so 11 by 8.5, with a cover, table of contents page, and starting at physical number one, custom numbered, down to page 11. I will come back to the cover and I'd like to repurpose this for an iPad. So I will start by going to Content Collector and I will click once on this logo and it's loaded in the content conveyor. Click once on this text and once on this text. And now I will make a new document. I'm in the digital publishing layout and I want to do the iPad but landscape and it is iPad landscape with one column and I always do a slug for job specific notes. I will click OK and the primary text frame I don't want on the cover. I want to use none or a blank cover. So I'll drag none in front of A1 so it has no master items. Then I will switch to the Content Placer tool. When I go to Content Placer, I will say, create a link between this print-based InDesign document and this new iPad layout. That way, if I change the title here, it will update here. Let's see if that works. I will click once to place the logo. Now I've got two items in my cursor. Click once to place the title, and I need to do some resizing. Alternate layouts will help you with this, but for now, we're just covering linked stories. The chain in my cursor indicates it's linking as I click. I've collected and placed all the content, and I will save as iPad, and this is horizontal, so I use the letter H for that and my document is InDesign Intro. And when I'm done, this will be the end file. I use the underscores to make them web compliant because if I upload this to a web server, every underscore is replaced with percent %20. Practice does not make perfect. I always say practice makes permanent bad habits, so practice good stuff. Since I do a lot of print and web and mobile and tablet, every file name is web compliant. Now let's inspect the links. I'll use my selection tool to make this wider so it fits my iPad layout. I'll move this to my bottom margin and also make it wider. And I'll pop the logo at the upper right corner. I double clicked to get into the InDesign Introduction text box. And instead of saying InDesign Introduction, I'll double click the word and type Fundamentals and my red squiggles were edit spelling, dynamic spelling. It's checking as I type to make sure everything's correct. It's Myriad Pro 29 point, and if I click on InDesign intro, there's a new hazard icon, which you will see on images also. This means the original content has been modified in this new linked text box. So if I click once, it updated it to InDesign Fundamentals. If I go back to the original and I double click to get inside, double click to select the word and make the type size 25 points and press return or enter. When I click back on the other document, it is tracking style settings also. So with my selection tool, update by clicking and it went to 25 point. In fact, under window, and links, when you are linking stories, you will see that they appear in your links panel. So if I stretch this and take a look at the file name, I'll see that I've got on my hard drive, the InDesign intro begin document is the source file. And this, this is the linked or referenced logo 
the 1807. This is a text frame. In fact, I can click the number 1 and see which text frame is linked. I get one link for the original document and one link for the one I'm building. Click this number 1. This text box is linked. One to the original file, one to the document I'm building. And then finally, I have my logo, which is linked externally. So you don't always need the same behavior, because if I were to change this red to a blue in Illustrator, it would update in every place to document. But instead of turning on the preference to maintain links when placing text in spreadsheet files, it is linking a story or a text frame from one document to the next and the next. The beauty of this is so many people are repurposing content for devices, for smartphones and iPads and Android devices. And this way you don't have to go to every single file and correct typos or make type changes. You update it in the master document, which in my case was born as a print document, and it will update anywhere a linked story is used. There are other ways to accomplish linked stories, but I find when I was learning during the pre-release cycle, the content collector and content placer with create link on was the easiest to use. Linked stories took me a little while to fully understand. I had to do quite a bit of practice with it, quite a bit of back and forth editing, and I recommend you do the same. Make changes to this text in the linked file, and make changes to this text in the source file. Play with the phone number box down at the bottom, and I'll move my links panel over here because I always like to have it on screen. That is your introduction to linked stories across InDesign documents, brand new to InDesign CS6.